All right, welcome to Coffee with Marcus. Today is episode 201. Thank you so much for being there for the 200th episode. We did it in the last one, celebrated a whole lot. And here is what we are going to do today. We will talk about what's happening in the market. This will only take us two minutes or so. And then, yes, many of you have been asking about it. How is my trading account doing? How are my accounts doing? And we will talk about what has been happening in October. So I'll show you exactly where I'm standing for October and for the year. We will talk about my current trades and my current positions that I'm in according to both the power X strategy and the wheel strategy. And then as always, ask me anything because I'm here live with you and I appreciate you being live here with me. Anyhow, as you can see, we have a full agenda, so let's get started. This show is about real money and real trades. I'll show you the trading strategies that I personally trade, the tools that I use to trade my own accounts, and we will talk about the right mindset of a trader. Now, talking about mindset, I'm going to show you how to create SRC profits. And SRC stands for systematic, repeatable, and consistent, because that is the key to long-term success in the market. So if you are sick of all the hype and empty promises, and you want to learn trading strategies that actually work, then click on like right now and let's get started. All right, let's get started. And as I said, we will start with uh, what is happening in the market. So we'll take a look at this uh, really quick. Won't take us a whole lot because there is not much going on in the markets at all. So here we are looking at the S&P and we are up five whopping points for the day. And if you look at a five minute chart, we see that there's a whole diddling along. And yes, diddling along is a technical factor. At least I decided a technical term. Here is where we opened. Uh, at first, we pushed a little bit higher. Let me just uh, bring up my pen here. Pushed a little bit higher and then lower a little bit up. And right now, a whole bunch of nothing on a beautiful Monday. And today is, what is today? October? No, November 8th already. So we see exactly the same uh, in the Dow. Also, we opened higher. The Dow is still up, but overall, as you can see, not much going on and the same in the NASDAQ. Well, earnings season is winding down, so this is why there's not much going on. And also, the economic calendar this week is super light. We have a few Fed members speaking, but that's not moving the market. Last week, we had the Fed meeting, and the Fed meeting was the important one. And uh, Right now, not much to see here, not much going on. So that's what's happening. But we have to see what the heck is Tesla doing today? Because Tesla, 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 Elon Musk actually said that he will sell 10% of his shares. And earlier, Tesla was down more than 5%. Right now, they are recovering a little bit, but still down 3.5% for the day. So uh, going into this week, what to expect? Well, uh, pretty much from what I see it, a whole bunch of nothing <laughs> is probably what will happen. And at some point, market participants will find an excuse to push the markets probably a little bit lower. Because if we look of what has been happening uh, here over the past, what, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, I think it has been a full month. We just see that the markets have been up, up and away without really significant down days. And this cannot go on forever. So we will see what the markets do. This is why we can't predict the markets. Let me just come back to you here for a moment. This is why we trade what you see and not what you think. And as you can see, I have another mark here that says, follow your plan. Whatever your plan might be, and your plan might be vastly different, from my plan. Now, I want to show you the results of what has happened uh, in October for me as I have been trading my plan. And this is where I want to give you right now a quick update on my account for October. So um, let's see. It seems that the video is a little bit choppy. Usually, YouTube figures this out. And in the next few minutes, it should be better. So we will be fine. I think audio is important and it is important that you can see my screen. So let's see. Can you see, can you see my screen? <laughs> okay. So if you're new to this channel, uh, let me give you a very brief recap of what happened. So this here is account update number 14. 
In the beginning of the year, I decided to put $250,000 into a margin account. And uh, so in a margin account, these $250,000 in cash become $500,000 in buying power. And I've been trading this account according to the wheel strategy since, uh, as you can see at the bottom of the screen here, January 11th. And uh, I have very specific goals for this strategy, for this account. The goal here is um, that I want to make $15,000 per month. So this means $180,000 per year. Now, this is in realized profits, and we'll talk about that in a moment. And uh, for me, it's also important that I make these SRC profits, and SRC stands for systematic, repeatable, and consistent. Now, if you want to know what happened here over the year, you can uh, look at the other account updates. But let me give you a very brief recap of what has happened until September. And then, of course, we will talk about October and what has happened here. So in January, uh, I realized $21,281 in profits, uh, February $26,000, March $16,000. And then as you can see in April, this was the first time where I did not achieve my goal of making $15,000 per month. Also in May, fell a little bit short here. And then as you can see, June has been fantastic again. July, doing good. August, doing good. September, doing good. So thus far for the year on this account in realized profits, I'm at around $160,000, just a little bit uh, above there. So how have I been doing in October? Did I achieve my goal for October here as well of making $15,000? And here's the answer. No, I did not. In October, my realized profits are 5,732. And uh, so this means that today, uh, year to date, I'm sitting at 166,128 out of my goal of uh, making $180,000. So as you can see, I'm a little bit shy. I have two more months to get up to $180,000 and we will see. So why? Why did I not achieve my goal in October? Well, this is where we can go back to what has happened here in the markets in October. Now, the wheel strategy, if you are new to this strategy, here are the three steps according to the wheel strategy. Let me just write this down here really quick. Number one, we want to sell puts and collect premium. Number two, we might or might not get assigned, meaning that we might have to own a stock. Or if we are not getting assigned, then no worries, we're selling more puts. If we do get assigned, we are selling calls. Now, there's a very strong uh, correlation between the VIX, uh, which is the fear factor or the volatility index, and how, many, uh, how much premium you can get. And uh, if we take a look at the VIX here over the past months in October, then we'll see that here, October, this is the VIX. What does it mean? If the VIX is low, premiums are low. Also, what I want to see in order to follow my plan is that I want to see down days because this is when we get more premium. Whenever the market is going down, typically, the VIX is going up. If you take a look here, a little bit of uh, what has happened over the past few months, then we see that right now we are very, very low when it comes to the VIX. And uh, if you take a look at what has happened in my account and the VIX, then you see that there's a very strong correlation. Whenever the VIX is high as it was, let's go back here, and um, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so that you can see this better on the VIX. So as a premium seller, when you see, for example, here, January and February, the VIX, even in March, has been fairly high. Can you see this? So this is here, January, February, March, has been pretty good. Then April and May, April and May, the VIX has been rather low. Now let's see what happened here in my account according to this strategy. So in April and May, I made fewer profits. Now let's see, in June, June was really, really good. Can you see this? June, $22,000. So if we look now at June, what do we see? This here is June. 
The VIX is higher again, and this is good for an options seller. And then we see that uh, in July, August, the VIX is a little bit all over the place here, uh, has been doing good. And uh, this is what you see in my account. Now, here's the deal. I told you, I follow my plan. And when there's nothing to trade, I'm sitting on my hands, which is one of the most difficult things as a trader to sit on your hands. Because in order to succeed in the markets, to make money in the markets, two conditions have to be met. Number one, you have to be ready. And I was ready every day, every day, bright eyed and bushy tailed, looking at the markets, finding opportunities according to the wheel. But number two, the markets have to be ready for your trading strategy. Now, you might have had a killer October. You might have uh, had the best October ever with a different strategy, or maybe you have been trading the wheel strategy with a slightly different plan. However, one of the things that I found is most challenging that when there's nothing to trade according to your plan, you follow your plan, right? Then, um, well, <laughs> in this case, it's better not to trade than to lose any money. And uh, let, let's face it. I, I mean, if we are looking here at uh, the the realized profits, you see that in terms of realized profits, every month has been a profitable month. And I'm OK if I'm rather making a little bit less than losing money, because you might have heard this. Uh, there, there's this this myth out there that I don't know if it is true, but anecdotally, it seems and the myth is that 90 percent of traders lose 90 percent of their accounts in the first 90 days of their trading. Right. And this is why uh, for me, it's about not losing money, even if I fell shy of my goal. One of the most challenging things is if you're sitting there and you're forcing a trade, if you're sitting there and say, oh, my gosh, uh, so I want to make fifteen thousand dollars per month. So this means seven and a half thousand dollars per week. This means three thousand, uh, no, uh, three thousand seven hundred fifty dollars per week. Right. And if you sit there and say, I need to find some trades to make three thousand seven hundred fifty dollars per trade. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a sip of coffee. This is the worst thing that you can do, forcing yourself to trade. And uh, this is where I rather sit on my hands and wait until the market conditions are right. And if I'm looking at the markets and if I see what has been going on here in October and I see that the markets are just up, up, up and away for this particular trading strategy, this is not good. Well, I will show you a different trading strategy. So the Power X strategy, I'll show you the results here also that I've on a much, much smaller account. So uh, this were these market conditions were great according to the Power X strategy. So and again, your results might vary. For me, the wheel strategy was still OK, right? Because I still was able to realize some profits for Power X strategy. This is where it was really good. This is where we had several trades that worked out beautifully. And we will take a look at this. OK, so you know what? Why don't we do this right now? Um, I know that usually this episode is more about the slightly larger account uh, that I'm trading here, the, the $250,000 account. But let's take a look at the other account here as well. So I want to bring up the trades. And uh, let me just switch over here to the desktop. There we go. So here are the October trades according to the PowerX strategy. As you can see, there was Nicola and you see here the open date and the close trade. So I included the, the Nicola trade here as an October trade because I closed it on October 1st. Let me just see. Uh, can you see this? Are the numbers good? Should I want me to make this a little bit bigger? Let me just see if I can zoom in here slightly. This way it's easier to see. OK. Cool. So then we had uh, Stitch Fix. Stitch Fix was a losing trade. So lost uh, $231 on this. And this here, a uh, much smaller account that's a $20,000 account. So let me just put it down here. So $20,000 account. Because many of you have asked, can I actually trade a smaller account with these strategies? And so I decided to open a smaller account here and trade the PowerX strategy. So you see the first two trades here uh, that I opened were losing trades. Then FNGU was a nice winning trade. So this was opened on October 14th. 
uh, closed it on October 19th. Then we had NVIDIA. This was one trade, but I traded it with two profit exits. And uh, this is where on the total trade here, made a little bit over $1,300. So combined here, it's hard to see in the, the bottom here, you see it's $1,362. FTIA was a losing trade, so lost on this one. LAC, and this is a trade that I entered, uh, made some money here, and I still, LAC, I still have half of this position open. Let me switch over to the iPad. So this is where you see, uh, that's another great trade. So LAC, here, I had a total of 180 shares, so I was able to sell 90 of them in October with a profit. And here we have another 90 open right now. And uh, you see that currently the unrealized profits here are $868. Now, again, these are unrealized and we don't count unrealized profits or losses because they're subject to change at any given day. So earlier, I think this was up to $1,100. Now it's $800. So every minute, this basically changes. And then as you can see, I also have CELH and uh, CELH is another trade that I entered. And uh, right now, yeah, it's a scratch trade. It's, it's not making money. It's not losing money. It has been making money last week. Today it's down. And this is where you see the unrealized profits don't really matter that much to me. They might matter to you. And uh, if that is super important to you, that is fine. Um, anyhow, so let's go back to of what happened here. So LAC uh, was $400 plus there's something open there. And then I had some OPCH calls. So this I was trading OPCH calls and this was a negative of 180. So uh, let's just see if we are telling all this up and we are building the sum over these trades, not counting any unrealized profits or gains, then we see that uh, there's uh, around $1,200. So that's not bad at all, right? And if you take the, the $1,200, uh, so 1,200, well, let's be exact here. So 1,264.63 divided by $20,000 times 100. So we see that's a around 6.3%, 6 6.32315, uh, anyhow. So there we go. This is what has been happening for me in October. And uh, we'll see how November is doing. Thus far, November is doing great. I uh, Let's actually take a look at uh, my positions here because, uh, <coughs> excuse me. There we go. All right. <clears throat> <laughs> seem to have a frog in my throat here. Let me see if I, you know, I have some water in the other cup here. That helps. Shouldn't drink that much coffee. And hey, this is where you see that this is live here. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> Diesel feeds. Good. Uh, what do you want to talk about? Oh, the current positions. Okay. So let's take a look at the accounts. Let's take the uh, look at the current positions that I'm in and uh, what I'm doing right now. Well, with the, according to the PowerX, you have already seen the trades according to the PowerX strategy. So right now, let's actually take a look here at uh, the positions that I have according to the wheel strategy. DFS. Uh, so DFS, Discover Financial Services. Uh, let's actually take a look at the charts here because that's a super interesting one. So Discover Financial Services, they reported earnings and uh, no, it wasn't earnings. It was Visa reported earnings. Visa reported earnings and then plummeted and dragged down Discover Financial Services here as well. And uh, on that day, I sold the 116 put. So I sold the 116 put and collected some premium. And as I told you, uh, this is where <clears throat> this is where uh, if it trades below your strike price on expiration date, you're getting assigned. So I got assigned Discover shares. And uh, if you look back here at the account, you will see that this is exactly 900 shares. So you see it right here. I got assigned 900 shares. So I traded nine options according to my rules on Discover. So I got assigned 900 shares at 16. And now I sold calls, right? Again, the three steps, 
Number one, you want to sell puts. If you're getting assigned, right, then you're selling calls. And uh, let me just quickly grab this here. There we go. Okay. So, and this is where I was able to sell calls several times because as you can see, we were trading right around this price. So on Discover, uh, let us take a look at this really quick. Go uh, to year to date. I'll bring it up to show you what I was able to do here over uh, the past, there we go, Discover, over the past couple of weeks. So I was able to get uh, $1,345 in premium. So this is already realized. And right now, since uh, we are trading higher at 116, I also have some unrealized profits of $1,600. So if I would close the position right now, it would be worth $3,000. But hey, I'm just looking at the realized because that is money that is in my account. And this unrealized stuff is subject to change every single minute, as we said. Okay. So this is uh, one of the positions that I'm in. Then I'm still in the LVS position. So let's take a look at LVS. So I'm bringing it up also here. I have uh, 2,600 shares on LVS. Bring it up here on the iPad. And LVS, I originally, let's zoom out a little bit. So originally, I sold puts at a strike price of 58, got assigned. And then as it was dropping, I flew a rescue mission. So this is where I am call them rescue missions. And it's basically the idea is that you're selling more puts, hoping to get a sign so that you can lower your cost basis. And so my cost basis right now is 51.42. Now LVS uh, has been really good to me. Uh, if we go back here to the history, and I've been able to collect a lot of premium on there. So the premium that I receive on LVS thus far has been a little bit over $7,000. Now, again, there's an unrealized loss right now. And uh, this is if I would sell LVS right now, uh, I would end up with, uh, what, around $18,000 there, uh, $15,000, uh, $18,000. There we go. Um, I have to really look closely here today. Uh, but I'm not planning to do this because LVS has been behaving really well recently. So that's another position that I'm in. Okay, let's take a look of what else is happening and is in the account. And of course, there is the right position. And so right, this is here, different story. Let's take a look at this. Let's bring it up on the chart so that you see what happened here. Huge mistake. Uh, with, well, this is where I hope that you can learn from my mistakes because when trading the wheel strategy, you want to make sure that you're trading value stocks and not growth stocks. And right is a growth stock. And I, I don't know, got greedy, was bored, whatever, made a mistake, traded right. Got assigned at uh, 2150, was flying several rescue missions, have been able to lower my cost basis to 1286, my break even to 1171. But as you can see, Ride is right now trading at $5.89. So this is a, a big one and we will see what happens. So Ride is reporting earnings um, and earnings are coming out on Thursday and we will see what happens then. In the past, there were really, really mixed reactions to earnings, as you can see, if you're looking here at the charts. So there was a time when they released earnings and were skyrocketing. Then there was a time when they released earnings and it didn't go well. Then there was a time when they released earnings and it went up. Then there was a time when they released earnings and not a whole lot was going on here. So we will see what happens on Thursday. And right before I hopped on the call here, I discussed, uh, because I told you what my plan is with Ride, right? That when it dips below four, I will aggressively sell calls. However, so just before I hopped on the call here, Coffee with Marcus, and went live with you, I talked to my head coach, Mark Hodge, because I have a different idea of what to do with it right now. And uh, so I, it was just an idea that I have in my head as I'm getting clearer on what exactly I want to do there. I'll, I'll keep you posted. I'll keep you posted, but it's, it's really good. I'll probably, um, this week I'm trading live with our mastermind members. So I'll probably talk to my mastermind members about it tomorrow morning when we are trading live and uh, just present uh, some different ideas. So my original idea was once it dips below four to aggressively sell calls and then get getting called away. 
But this has changed right now, and I'll uh, I'll keep you posted here. Anyhow, so let's talk about the uh, the last trade that I'm in here right now, which is UNG. Uh, UNG natural gas uh, in ETF. This is what I entered. I believe it was last Thursday. Uh, we sold puts on UNG with a strike price of 17. So I was looking here for uh, some solid support and I saw some solid support at 17. So we sold 17 puts that are expiring this Friday. So if by this Friday, UNG stays above uh, 18, uh, 17, I only keep the premium. And if it goes below, then I'm getting assigned 100 shares for each option that I sold. And on UNG, I sold 60. So I sold 60 options here. So this means that I would get assigned 6,000 shares if on Friday it is trading below $17. So we'll, we'll, keep, uh, we'll keep an eye on this. And uh, in the next Coffee with Marcus, you will see exactly of what is happening here. Thus far, the UNG position uh, is doing really well. If you look at this, so right now, uh, this is already up 33%, which is fine. I'm loving this, so can't complain. And uh, we'll see. But so far, it's definitely moving in the right direction. Okay, so there we go. This is uh, the account update here for October and also my current trades. We also already talked about uh, what's happening in the market. So right now, on to my favorite part where I will look at your questions and comments and answer as many as possible. Uh, before I do this, uh, let me just ask you if you found this helpful here at all, because if so, do me a favor and click on like, because this way I see what videos you like best and I will do more videos of those that you like and uh, do less of those that you don't like. So if you enjoyed this here, uh, congratulations, uh, give me a like. Okay. So let's see. So good to see everybody here. And I know we had so much fun. Uh, last week I was in Sacramento with my head coach, Mark Hodge and the team. And uh, we had a blast there. On Saturday, we actually met uh, several, several of our mastermind members at a restaurant in LA. So we had a great time here. Anyhow, so now it's good to be back home in my studio, as you can see. And I know YouTube still has a little bit of the lag, so the video is a little bit choppy, but the, the audio should be good here. Okay, good. So good to see everybody here. There's even Nathan uh, from Medellin in Colombia. Okay, good to see everybody. All right, and Sama Sama says, yeah, October was uh, good uh, for the PXS. Absolutely. Only winning trades? Well, it depends how you traded it. As you can see, I had some winning trades, I had some losing trades, and I'm always showing you everything. Winning trades, losing trades. Jim, so good to see you. You got your hat from the 200th episode. Congratulations. That's awesome. Thanks for being there. All right. Good. And uh, yeah, Kyle said it. Uh, patiently waiting for some, pol uh, some volatility. That's for the wheel strategy that what we are looking at. If you're trading the PowerX strategy, you don't have to wait for volatility. You can trade that strategy in volatile and quiet markets as we have here right now. All right, so uh, Webby Wonder says, any idea what's going on with NEG? I don't know what NEG is. You want to, want to take a quick look at this? I don't want to spend too much time on this. Is this Newegg? Oh yeah, it, it's probably, I mean, Newegg, didn't it uh, used to be a, a Wall Street bets darling uh, a little bit earlier this year? Uh, where it quickly jumped up from, uh, what, $10 to $80, so 800%, basically, and then came crashing down. So here's what we see today, up 60%. That's kind of crazy. So no idea. I stay away from these kind of stocks. I stay away from these kind of stocks. Anyhow. So, um, all right, Walter, it's time to listen while you're driving. Okay, be safe on the roads. Okay, just listen. Don't look at the screens here. Good, good, good. Okay. So Ken says, in theory, uh, if you make 180,000, you can take the rest of the year off. You see, this is where it depends on your goals. So if I'm achieving my goal early, why wouldn't I keep going? I mean, there's different ways how you can do this. You can either say, as soon as you have achieved your goal, you take off. But if you have already achieved it, it's almost like, you see, if you're let's say you're a runner, right? And uh, you, you run, uh, what, 100 meters and now 
you will see how little I know about sports, but let's say that you run 100 meters in eight seconds. Is that good? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> okay, it doesn't really matter. Um, and you say, oh, well, as, as an athlete, now I stop. I, I don't try to get better. I, I don't know. It, it's, it's not for me, right? For, for me personally, Ken, I would just keep going. But if, if this is your goal and you say, I'm done and uh, I do not want to make any more money and I don't want to risk because there's always the risk of losing money. If you don't want to do that, then you could actually stop trading. But I, I would keep going because as you can see, goals, I, I think goals are more like guidelines. They're like uh, guiding posts, right? That you want to move in this direction. But uh, what do they say? The, uh, the journey is the goal or something like this, right? I mean, you want to keep going. You want to hit your goals. And then once you have hit your goal, set the next one and go towards the next one. It's just me personally, Ken. I, I do not like to stop once I've achieved a goal. I like to keep going here. Okay. So Dave says, uh, my October realized profits were the same as Marcus. <laughs> I got lucky. Okay. Well, that's, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say lucky, but you followed your plan, right? And it seems that your plan is probably similar to mine. Now, here's Jim who hit 180,000 this past Friday for the year. Okay. I think as of last Friday, I'm on 166,000. So this is where, as you can see, Jim has a slightly different plan, obviously took some other positions and that's a great thing. I mean, I'm here to present you these strategies so that we take the nuggets out of this and you trade what makes sense for you, right? And uh, if it makes sense for you, great. If you have different trading strategies, good for you, as long as you make money. That's what we all want, right? All right. So let's see. Chad says, missed my monthly goal of 30% annualized, only made 25%. Chad, you, you, really, I understand missing a goal is something like wonk, wonk, wonk. But the important thing is, especially when trading, make sure that you're not losing money. I mean, profits are good no matter how small they are. And I mean, only 25%, I think others would kill for it. <laughs> Anyhow, good, good, good. What else do we have here? Uh, so Kyle says this month have been mostly selling covered calls for me thus far. Yeah, I, I haven't seen too many opportunities. A, a few that I traded here this month was, uh, what was it? I believe, um, we did have JWN. So JWN was great. We can take a look at this here really quick. Uh, let me just bring up JWN. So with JWN, uh, we sold calls quite a lot, made $13,686 and finally got called away on JWN. So got called away on Friday. So this has been great. And yes, we sold a lot of those in October. Absolutely. Good. Let's see. What else? Um, so Carlson says, uh, bull, crud uh, bull put credit spreads work wonderful in any up market. See, this is what I'm saying. I mean, there's so many ways to trade the markets. I'm presenting what I'm doing here, and I, I hope that you find this helpful and uh, maybe even inspirational. And you say, you know what? I, I would like to learn how to trade this. And uh, Carlson, here's the deal. If right now you're trading this and you're making money, keep doing what you're doing, right? Because obviously you're doing something good. All right, uh, so Jeff Jeff is asking about TSM for the wheel. What the heck is TSM? Let's take a look at this here really quick. Let's take a look at, uh, at TSM and see. Okay, a little bit all over the place, semiconductors here. Okay. Yeah, it seems to have very solid support here at, uh, I would say, probably 108, right? So if you're looking at this here, probably at 108. So here's the cool thing. If you have PowerX Optimizer, right? So we can go to PowerX Optimizer. Uh, we can go to the wheel and we can take a look at uh, TSM, Taiwan Semiconductors. And this is where uh, we actually get a pretty good idea of where we should be selling puts. And as you can see here at around the 109 level right now, this is what uh, our blue line here uh, is telling us, uh, we call it Jan's indicator because he has taken one of the ideas that we had and programmed it into an indicator. But yeah, I mean, anywhere between 108 and 109, I would like this. At this point, I would not sell at any other strike prices because again, where do you want to own this stock? And for me, this would be here at 108, 109. But yeah, uh, that's definitely a good one. Definitely a good one. 
All right, let's see. John said, I, I stopped selling put credit spreads because it all it takes a trend to reverse. A few trades go against you and wipes out all of your gains. This is where make sure that you understand the risks of each strategy. Every trading strategy has risks that you understand the rewards as well as the risk and then make a decision whether this is right for you, for your risk tolerance, for your account size. And uh, yeah, just overall for you to be able to sleep at night. See, I, I, I could sleep at night with the way how I trade. Uh, for others, this might be like, <gasps> no, this is crazy. And that's okay, right? There's other ways to trade and you do whatever makes you happy. Good. All right. So uh, Brody says he won a hoodie. Okay. Uh, who do I email? Please send an email to support at rockwelltrading.com. No, actually to Nicole. Nicole at rockwelltrading.com, Brody. Uh, with your address and we'll be happy and your size and we'll happy to send you the hoodie that you want. So that's only for Brody because uh, Brody won last week. Okay. Cool. Um, what else? Uh, Jim is not in the same position as me, uh, stuck in SPC and BYND. This can happen when you're trading the wheel. It can happen that you're getting stuck here. Yeah, so we'll see. Billy, uh, Jim is doing better than Marcus, and that's great. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm the greatest trader in the world. I'm sharing what I do, and uh, if you can outperform me, good for you. Good for you. I mean, these were congratulations, and I told it many times. I mean, Jim is doing really well, and uh, there are several Mastermind members. Um, I just talked last week when we were over dinner. Uh, I talked to one of the Mastermind members. She was sitting right next to me. I don't want to mention the name right now because it is a unique name and uh, she said you know what thus far for the year I'm at $217,000 in realized profits and I said holy moly that's fantastic right and I, I think it's it's wrong if now you start saying oh if, if she can do this I, I, I should be able to do this and you trade more aggressively don't do this I mean as long as you're making money be happy with the money that you're making and I'm very very happy for everybody every single trader who is making money because there are so many traders who are losing money. I'm always happy when I hear successes and I don't compete with anybody but myself. And I think overall, especially when it comes to trading, that's good advice. I mean, I'm here's the reason. I'm not sharing my account results updates here. The, the reason why I'm doing it is not to say, oh, look at me. I'm so great. No, I'm sharing what works for me. And please do not use this in any way ever as, okay, I'm not doing as well as Marcus, so I'm not as good as a trader. Or I'm doing better than Marcus, so I'm the best trader in the world. I mean, just use it as some, some guidelines so that you see what is possible. And when it comes to trading, really, compete with yourself. Because you're already competing with the markets, and that's tough enough. Uh, so don't use others here as, a, as guideposts. I highly recommend not. Have your own goals. Have goals that, that make sense for you. You see... We, we talked about this, this running the 100 meters in eight seconds. And again, no idea. Me, right now, if I would run 100 meters, I would probably be happy if I could make it in 12 seconds. That would be my goal. I mean, I, I would not compare myself to a world record holder or somebody who is running this regularly. So just uh, do it for yourself. Okay. David says, on the wheel, do you ever sell calls below your assigned price? Um, maybe, maybe be above the break even. You can do it above your break even, but I wouldn't do it. Uh, I wouldn't do it below your cost basis. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Kathy said I sold 115 puts on DFS. Did I? I know that we talked about 116. Uh, Kathy is also in our mastermind, and I know that I think some of the mastermind members got into 116. Could that be? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> so maybe that's why I got a little bit confused. All right. Let's see. Uh, so David says, most of the time, the support line on the wheel is far below the, uh, the price on the calculator. What to do? Sit on your hands and wait until the perfect opportunity comes along. So this is where, yes, I've been flagging it. No, 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 no. Uh, because when trading the wheel, two conditions have to be met. Number one, you need to or you want to own the stock. If you don't want to own the stock, don't trade it. And secondly, you want to own it at the strike price. And again, for you, it can be different. For me, it is at the blue line. That's what I 
like to do. And this is why in October, I have been sitting on my hands a lot, according to the wheel strategy. According to the Parex strategy, you see, I've been taking several trades here. Okay. Anyhow, yeah, and uh, Teresa said it. Uh, thanks for responding. Teresa is also, she's awesome. She's in our mastermind. Everybody knows Teresa, baller Teresa. Anyhow, uh, so yeah, wait for a good down day and be picky. Cash is also position. I, I, I talked about, I want to talk about it this morning in the stock market update. Warren Buffett right now is sitting on a record pile on cash. There's a reason why he's sitting on a record pile on cash. If this works for Warren Buffett, it should maybe work for you. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyhow, good to see you. So um, let's see. Uh, is that 300k unrealized loss for right? I can't see the screen. No, it's a, uh, let me see. Let me bring it up again. So if you look at right, so I'll bring it up here so that we can all see it again. So let's see the screen clear. So it's $104,000 on the stock and I realized $17,000. So if I would close that position right now, it would be a loss of $87,000 if I would close the position right now. But I have some plans with right. And uh, again, I'll hash them out. I'll share them with my, my mastermind members first. And then uh, once I have a clearer picture, I will let you know too what I have in mind here. So right now, um, it's um, so just to make sure it's not 300,000, it's uh, 87,000. If I would close it right now, 17,000 realized, 104,000 unrealized. And if you add them both up, there you go. Okay, does this help, David? Good. So uh, let's see what else do we have going on. Uh, so where would you like to? Uh, where would you go to look up a Tika's ADR? Well, the ADR is not a common indicator, so you can program it into your charting software, or you can use the ATR, the average true range, that is close enough. That's close enough. Okay. Anyhow, is this overall helpful as we are going through this here? And if you are going through the question, if it is, do me a favor and just click on like this way. I know that you're enjoying this and uh, we'll keep going for just a few minutes. And uh, yeah, Fallon says, set on my hands today. Thanks for teaching me this. Yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, patience is a virtue when it comes to the market. And uh, the, the market does not reward the impatient. If you're sitting there and say, oh, do you, dear market, you have to give me some money right now. No, it doesn't work this way. The market does not owe you money. The market is graciously giving you money every now and then. And when that happens, you say thank you. And you be very humble because if you're not humble, if you're greedy when it comes to the markets, the markets will punish you. The markets will punish you. Okay. Anyhow, now Donald says October has been my best month for far. Okay. Really had to uh, screen the, the shell scanner, the wheel scanner, probably suggestions to do this and sit on my hands a lot. Absolutely. Absolutely. Did you went her asked, what is the minimum uh, for to trade the wheel? I suggest that you have at least 10,000 in cash. So $20,000 in a margin account, more is better when you're trading the wheel. But uh, I would say 10,000 in cash that you put into a margin account. So that becomes 20,000. Uh, um, this is where yeah, you should be fine. That's a, that's a good starting point here. Okay, so Angela uh, says it. Okay, have a, if you have a moment, hit the like button below the video. Really would appreciate this. Okay, so CS says, uh, love the show. You also check the image uh, managed portfolio theta and beta weighted delta. No, I honestly, I don't even know what you're saying. I know theta, I know delta. I don't even know beta. I don't know that Greek. And I don't look at that at all. Uh, so for me, I like to keep it simple. I used to use the option Greeks a lot, um, but, but then they, they were more confusing to me than they were actually helpful. So that's why, yeah, that's why I'm not looking at this. Okay, good. What else? Oh, there's a, okay, Martin. So the level four, is that uh, what you are looking for? Possibly, maybe. Okay, anyhow. All right, so Joe was assigned on Friday, uh, 245 on BNTX and a good premium today on selling calls at 255. And that's what the wheel is all about, right? You sell puts on stocks that you do want to own. When you get assigned, you're selling calls until you get signed away. So it's kind of um, selling puts and then selling covered calls. It's both in one and that's why we call it the wheel here. 
Anyhow, good. Perfect. Well, we are already at the end of the time. I, I really appreciate you being here. I hope that you enjoyed this a lot. If this was your first time here, I'll link to some videos in the description and probably the team has linked to a few videos here. Take a look at these. If you're unfamiliar with the PowerX strategy or the wheel strategy, as you can see, I also have written a couple of books. Uh, I'll leave some links below. You can have it for $4.95. I'll be happy to send it to you no matter where in the world you are. So if you prefer reading over, um, what I want to say, reading over watching, do this. Nice hardcover books, as you can see. So links are in the description. Hey, really appreciate you all being here and sticking with me for now 201 episodes. Take a look at the other videos, get these books, and I will see you in the next Coffee with Marcus. Take care, everybody.